Woo! Hurry up, boys! Let's keep going here! Let's keep going! Ah! Obviously, I don't want to come in guns blazing. You know, I can just be a voice or, you know, be, be someone to lean on and answer questions. Hey, let's get a shift here. Let's have a shift here. Energy, energy. I think Pat brings a lot of confidence, a lot of swagger. Cry some more about your injury, you loser. He's the type of guy that'll do anything to win. You know, he's invested in it, you know, emotionally and physically. Good stick by Maroon, creates a loose puck. Well, obviously his pedigree is uh, very strong. His uh, resume has uh, won, you know, three Stanley Cups. He knows what, uh, how to conduct himself on and off the ice. He's a pro. And now Maroon and Simmons both with a big smile on their face. He's got a big personality in it. I know he can be soft-spoken at times, but it's, it's a good cover. You're scared. That just proved the point. It's exciting. I want to continue to play, so it's a great opportunity for me, not only to play and to have a comeback year here and you know get to get my game where I need to be, but also to put another jersey on and with a great franchise. And I'm excited with an opportunity to go win again. on Davis Island, Tampa, Florida. I'm Captain Danny Del Roselle, and we have a five-man crew. And my guys, we do a lot of uh, PT and exercise and what have you, and we, we do play the pickleball quite a bit. We have three shifts here and kind of say, hey, let's try this new thing. We got a net, started playing, and uh, Pat drove by one day, saw us and said, hey, I said, come on and get it. He showed up, and next thing you know, he's, he's part of the crew. Let me find my group here. Well, I mean, I'm going to say myself, obviously. I think I am. I think when you ask them, they'll tell you too. I wouldn't say that I'm the best, but I think I can hold my own. <laughs> I'm old, but I still give them a run for the money. Yeah, I need your head out of your ass. He's huge, he's an icon. Everybody knows who Patty is. He's been great for Tampa. Been really good for the whole city. It's been a fun time in Tampa, especially to have him here. So to see him go is gonna be sad. You know, it's sad to lose him, but I know the business. It, you know, it is what it is. And hopefully he does well up there with you guys too. Good job, boys. That was awesome. Yeah, thanks for doing that. Yeah, for sure, bro. I that appreciate that, yeah. What they do for us is, you know, they sacrifice, you know, every day, put their life on the line, and they go out the door every day and hug their family. You never know what's gonna happen. So, uh, what they do. So, an opportunity to come out here and play with them is always great. And and uh, to get my ass kicked. So, I'm gonna continue to get my ass kicked, but I did one today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, one more ready. One, two, three. There we go. All right, you got it.
most important thing for us is uh, just spending time together. That's the most important thing in the summertime. It's time for us to relax, enjoy family time, and uh, a lot of golf cart rides involved in the Maroon household. He is the best dad. Everyone gravitates to him, the dogs, his son, our daughter. He is like the biggest, softest teddy bear. Why do you run to mommy? I always tell people what's so funny is his on ice persona is like a lot of chirping, some fighting. Pat the dad is very sweet and soft and sensitive. Go, race. When the work day's done and you get to come home and spend time with your family and uh, kind of lights you up a little bit, you know? Puts a smile back on your face and everything's kind of worth it at, at the end of the day. Obviously my 14 year old's not here at the time, but he comes down in the summer uh, for two months. So it's easy to come home and see your two kids smile and you know, that's what it's all about. Come on, come on. Oh. Move it. My name is Anthony Thomas Maroon. I'm Patrick Maroon's son. I play hockey for the AAA Blues and I'm here in Minnesota for a showcase. Oh my God. You hear my full goal? It's kind of come full circle for me just to watch him play and you know I remember myself when I was at that age and to watch now my son in that same jersey that I played when I was 15 years old like him and to watch them all develop and become good young men is really fun to watch and uh, certainly my son. What kind of hockey parent are you? <laughs> I just like to watch closely and uh, after the game and once to have a conversation uh, usually he he usually asks he's like dad how do you think I played and then uh, I usually say, well, how do you think you did? And then he'll give me the answer and then I'll give him my feedback, but I'm here to help him and guide him as much as I can, but I'm also here to be a parent and make sure he's a good young man. Change. Too long. What's he doing? Stop footing. Sometimes I get mad at him, but you can't really get mad at him because he, he knows what he's talking about. The crying picture, man. I was looking at the roster sheet and all of a sudden the goal horn goes on and I didn't know it was my dad. And he points at me, I'm like, oh my gosh, my dad scored and I just started balling out. It's been an emotional roller coaster for me all year. And to score a big goal like that in front of my hometown, uh, my son was in the stands tonight, uh, fiance, friends, family. I mean, but my linemen, I gotta give credit to my linemen. They battled with me all year. They pretty much turned my season around. But I think it was just a very emotional night and a lot of stress and you know I'm sure he wanted us to win really badly so when he saw I scored I'm sure he just kind of broke down which I broke down too I think it was a very special night for everyone nice play. Just happy that you know he wants to you know kind of follow my footsteps but just go out there and you know play the game that I loved when I was a young kid too so I'm a proud dad and uh, you know I just can't wait to see him keep growing and you know keep being the man he is today. So you're gonna to load towards me, load up this leg, and you're gonna to drive to athletic position. You can drag your foot just like I did. Load the hip, drive. I'm Dylan Smith, performance coach here at Suka and co-owner as well. Suka is kind of, uh, the name behind that is the pursuit of happiness and mindfulness. And here we like to say we do that through physical struggle. Stay low, really drive away from me. Try to break right through that belt. Yep. Yes. 
There we go. Rest. That was freaking awesome. They're the best of the best. They're the most elite athletes in the world, physically and at their sport. But when it comes down to actual, the mental, like there's so much room for growth and so much room for slipping when they're tired and things like that. Go. Here, get him up higher, get him up higher, get him up higher. Come on. There we go. There we go. There you go. Time. Light and snappy, baby. Typically like the first part of the day, I'll do a little bit more like movement-based stuff, some plyometrics, some more like technical movements, and now we'll kind of drift into the lift, which will be a total body lift. Lots of intent. Awesome. Ugh. Textbook. Boom, rest. He's very, very technical. You might not get that through conversation and fun and all the banter with him, but when it's time to lock in, like he's a dude that doesn't let one rep go by that doesn't have 100% intent to it. Go. Leg straight, leg straight. There you go, keep him up high. Hips up higher. Time. Beautiful. I'm very aware that like I'm a very minuscule part of Pat Maroon's career and, and season. But if I can help give him just like the one thing that he can take with him, I'm not trying to rebuild the ship that he's kind of come in here on. It's like, where's the ship at and how do we tailor it to him specifically, individually, and then ultimately with some philosophies that I believe in. Especially my age at 35, you want to keep up, you want to stay in uh, the new ways of training, the cardio and getting in shape and everything. But, you know, obviously I didn't learn the first three years of my pro career, but I learned after that. We talked all night about the fact that the Phantoms are not a running gun team. That's not your game, and you don't want to get rolled into that, even though you've got a five goal lead in the third. Yeah, I know, we're not a running gun team. I think we're a layback team, and we just gotta capitalize on their mistakes, and I think that's what we've been doing all game. I think I played in nine games with the Phantoms at the time, and then we parted ways. To go through that process is, it wasn't fun. You know, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I wanted to retire, I wanted to quit. And, uh, I called my dad and I was like, I, I just want to come home. I'm done with it. I don't want to play anymore. My dad's like, why don't you just keep sticking it out? I'm telling you, it'll be worth it, man. I was in a shell. I was embarrassed of myself. And, you know, being sent home from the team is, it's not a good reputation, so it was the lowest point of my career, lowest point as a person. I just started trading and skating and being focused on me instead of worrying about everything else around me. And what Philly didn't see in me, now it's time to prove to Anaheim what I can bring to the table, what kind of person I am, what kind of teammate I am, what I can do on the ice. Everyone's doubted me, and I don't want to pat on my back by any means because I kind of like it. It's kind of a big F you to them. Like, listen, if you were that good enough or you were the best, you would have been here, right? So my dad was right, you know, just stick it out, change your ways, be a better person, take better care of yourself. And I found the right coach in the minors. I found the right coach in the NHL that took a chance on me and the rest was kind of history. skate. I hired a skills coach this summer so uh, he flew in town from Boston and go skate with him for two hours but as of current right now we gotta get that coffee first. <laughs> What's your coffee with? Just a black ice cold brew. It's too hot in Florida for a hot coffee in the morning. How you doing? Good how are you? Very good. It's early. <laughs> Did you finally move in? Thanks, guys. See ya. Are you uh, prepared for the cold again, or? I already have my Canadian goose, so I'm ready. I already got my uh, gloves and hats. But 
I'm really looking forward to Goldie just seeing the snow for the first time and being cold. So I'm excited. All four seasons. I haven't had that the last four years. So it'll be good to go through the whole process again. Very good. Good one. Good, breathe. We linked up in St. Louis and had a chance to get on the ice together, get to know each other a little bit and talk about his game and now we're, now we're here together. So you're gonna shoot off your left foot and get back on your right. Curl back. Better? Yeah, anytime you do a drill, you gotta think the game. You gotta think hockey, who's gonna be around you, and he's played in the league for a long time, so he understands his strengths, he understands his weaknesses, and that's what we're trying to work on, right? So it's the ability to, to adapt and see, there's nine other people on the ice. We're playing around people, we're playing against people, so how do we make the best available play that's, that's right for us? Really good. And it doesn't matter how, many, how long you've been in the league, how long you've played for, you can always learn something. And if he, if he gathers one bit of information and takes it with him and puts that into his game, it's obviously gonna make an impact for him. So you traded by the Flyers, traded by the Ducks, traded by the Oilers. <laughs> talking about all these Anyone else? People, <laughs> it's just them. You're talking about all these people growing up that didn't believe in you. But then in 2018, you you have some say in your own fate. You, you're a free agent. You get to go home to St. Louis. You win the cup. And the St. Louis Blues are the Stanley Cup champions for the first time in franchise history. We were off to a terrible start, one. I was off to my worst start in, I would say, two years. You know, going from Edmonton and having very good success and then going to New Jersey and having really good success. And then I don't think I scored a goal until January. So yes, those guys were in the back of my mind. Oh, Patty is back in St. Louis. He can't handle the pressure. He can't do that. You know, what a terrible signing. And then things clicked. Hoisting the Stanley Cup over my head, being a Blues fan my whole life, my dad being a season ticket holder. To do that was, Awesome. Went in the cup in St. Louis kind of changed a lot. Going to dinners, going to a Cardinals game, going to whatever. Getting recognized more, I guess. And I love it. I love all my fans. I love it. And then obviously winning two more is just out of control. Are you satisfied? No. Why would you be? I think when you Play in the NHL, one is to get there, right? And if you play one game, they can never take that game away. And when you win one, you want to win multiple. You're always hungry for it. And I think once you get a taste of it, you want to do it again. It's, there's no better feeling. But it's what we dreamed of as young kids and pretending to be a player in your backyard or your basement or in the street and scoring that big time goal. And those are moments that you play for and you sacrifice for for your not only yourself but your family and your pride. When you walk away from the game, that's it. You know, those those are moments that no one will ever take away from you. That'll work. Get in. Oh, that would have been good TV, huh? We're at Featherstone Country Club. You get to see the real sport golf where I'm really good at. No, I'm kidding. I got Robbie out here. 
Good swing. And uh, my brother Phil. Yeah, good one. And then the Minnesota legend himself, Carl Rudolph. I know these Minnesota fans are gonna go nuts when they see him. Nice little surprise guest for me. Oh, be good. Oh, leaked on you. A little bit, stay there. Down here in Tampa, it's, it's a small community, especially of athletes, whether it's the Lightning guys, the Bucks guys, some of the baseball guys that are here for, for spring training. And we all kind of live in the same area. So I uh, had already knew a couple guys on the Lightning from being in Minnesota all the years we were in Minnesota. And then, you know, just got linked up with Patty through a bunch of mutual friends. And that sucks. I don't know what's going on with me today. It's the blister again. I gotta figure it out. He always makes excuses. Now he's got blisters. He's gonna blame it on his job too, now next. Oh, Pat. Pat! I just hit him. All right. Dude, I think I just hit him. No, it rolled up on him. You're good. Did I hit someone? That's so good. Sorry. Sorry, guys. You can sign my hat. Yeah, I can do that. Help me. There you go. Patty. Oh, sweet. There's the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, brother. Where are you going next, you know? Minnesota. All right, I'll have to become a Minnesota fan. There you go. He's the perfect athlete for the state of Minnesota. You know, just a blue collar guy that plays the game the right way. And that's what Minnesota sports fans love and appreciate. I was very fortunate to be there for a long time and just love everything about Minnesota sports fans and, you know, Went to a lot of wild games over my time there, so I'm excited for Patty and his family to get up there and experience the state of hockey. Yeah, I'm proud of him. He's come a long way. He's one of the best role models in the league. Nobody really understands what goes on in the back of the locker room, and the fans chirp him. Like, I think every team needs a role model guy and I think he's the guy for that. I think you never get tired of winning. I don't think he'll ever be satisfied. I think he will want to win as many cups as he can while he's still playing. And I always told myself I wanted to play in the NHL, but I never thought it would come true. But, and if I didn't, I can say I tried, right? And that's the most important thing. And to be where I'm at today, and I'm very happy with that. You know, you always want to keep going and keep driving. And, you're not satisfied until they say, okay, your, your time is done. But obviously I played against many when I was in St. Louis a lot and they're a good hockey team, a very good hockey team with an opportunity with a big window to go out there and try to win a Stanley Cup here.